Okay, so the primary key for allocation is the primary key of section plus the primary key of instructor. But we already saw from the previous slide that the primary key of section itself is course ID, section name, semester ID. Okay, it consists of all of those three things. And therefore, the primary key for allocation is going to be course ID plus section name plus semester ID. All of this together is the primary key of section. And then we add on the primary key of instructor, so plus instructor ID. Okay, so allocation actually has a primary key consisting of four different fields. Okay, in this kind of a scenario, you might consider giving allocation its own primary key. Okay, you might consider giving it completely its own primary key because it's got too much going on. Okay, in fact, what we'll do as you will see later on is for every associative entity, we'll just make it a practice to give it its own primary key. Okay, so we won't really think about key migration. We'll just give it its own primary key and then all those other things will simply be uh, will simply be foreign keys, required foreign keys, that's all. Okay, we might do that also. Okay, so this is what explains all of this here. So far, this is what we have. We've put together everything that we have done so far and this is where we are. Course, section, allocation, semester, instructor. Okay, this is just a combination of all the diagrams we have looked at up to now. Now let's take a look at the final thing which is so it connects students and sections. There are many students and each student can register for zero or more sections and a section can also have zero or more students registered in it. Right? Why would a section have zero students? Well, you offered it but nobody took it. It's still there, sitting there with zero students. Why would a student not take any section? Well, they're taking the semester off. They're still a student in the university so they're not registered for anything for that particular semester. Or alternately, this is a new student who's just joined the university, just been admitted, they're there as a student, but they haven't taken any course yet. Okay, They haven't yet completed the registration formalities, so they don't have any sections. Okay, So again, this is a many-to-many -many relationship. We need an associative entity. What do we call that associative entity? Right, An associative entity that connects student with a section. Now, what does a student do to a section? The student registers for a section. Okay, so that associative entity represents a registration. Remember, all entity types are named with nouns. Okay, so you won't say registers, that's a verb. So you'll say it's a registration. Okay, so that's what you'll see as the associative entity. And for associative entity registration, uh, again, we are using key migration. So once again, there's a mistake here. Okay, so in this example, I'm using key migration for the primary key of registration and therefore its primary key is primary key of section plus primary key of student. We already know the primary key of section is course ID, section name, semester ID. From an earlier slide, we know this. So all of those get migrated into registration plus student ID. Right, so once again, you see that registration has got a very heavy primary key. It's got four attributes, four columns in its primary key, and therefore we might consider giving it its own primary key. Okay, so that completes our ER diagram for the situation that we spoke about. We could obviously add a lot more complication to this, but we're not going to do that. We're going to keep this ER diagram, and then we will now see how to migrate this ER diagram and make it into a database design. Okay, so we are going to consider every single entity type one by one, convert it into a table. Okay, I'll first start with the simple entity types like student and course and semester, instructor. Those are the simple ones because they have no foreign keys in them. Right? Because they are on the one side of each of the relationships. They have no foreign keys. 
and these are the three ones which have foreign keys. So we'll first take care of the simple ones and then come to the complex ones. Okay. So now we are looking at the process of actually migrating from the ER diagram to the actual database specification. In fact, in what follows, I'm going to show you the actual code to create the tables. But as I've already pointed out to you, we'll not actually have to manually write this code. We can actually get this code automatically generated. The Oracle Data Modeler, once you've got the ERD, it can generate this code for us. Okay, and later on, we'll use that code and directly import it into the database. So we'll have the database created for us. Of course, it'll be empty. It won't have any data, but all the tables and all the connections will all be there. We'll look at all of those processes shortly. Okay, so we're going to look at this migration from ERD to database and we'll see all the code for it. Okay, now you may think you have to memorize this, but of course, as I've already pointed out, don't even try to memorize this. There's no need to memorize what you're going to see in the process because the system will generate this code for us. That said, you know, this Oracle Data Manager is a data modeler is going to automate this process. But that said, don't switch off your, your brain while this is going on. Take a careful look at the code that is being generated just so that you understand what is going on. Okay? It just d deepens your understanding and it actually, I think, relieves you of the burden because you know that this is not something you're going to have to memorize. It's just something that you need to understand. So don't switch off your brain when I'm talking about all this code. Take a close look, nevertheless. Okay, so this is the student table. And as I've already pointed out, every uh, student entity type, as I've already pointed out, every entity type is going to become a table. So we're going to create a table called student. Okay. Now, I, I just like to follow a convention where the entity type name and the table name are exactly the same. Okay. That's because we are going to do this generation automatically. And when you do it automatically, the Oracle data modeler generates the same name. I don't want to mess with that. Okay. So we are going to create a table called student. And in fact, this code is generated by the Oracle data modeler. Okay. So notice that it created an, a table called with the same name as the entity type. This table has three attributes, so it says create table student. That is straightforward. Create for me a table called student. It's going to have these three attributes. Student ID, first name, last name. Okay, and it of course you can't just say create these three columns. You have to tell the database system what type of column each one is. Okay, so uh, later on I'll show you how we figured out that student ID is going to be an integer and first name is going to be a character, all of that. Okay, there's something more I did in Oracle Data Modeler for it to be able to do this. And I'll show that to you in a hands-on exercise document. Okay, that's a separate document which is posted on Blackboard. Uh, and you can look at the document and that will tell you what all to do step by step. Okay, you're going to do that separately. Okay, so these are the three attributes and all the three are required attributes all have stars and therefore it said for each one not null, not null, not null. Okay, that means null values are not allowed for those. You create a row, you better give values for all of three, all these three attributes. Okay, so it did that and then it also created another line which said alter table student had constraint student pk primary key. Okay, so in this when it created the table student it didn't really say which of the fields is the primary key. Okay, so at this point you've got a table with no primary key. So here we are saying make change the table and make the primary key as student ID. Okay, add constraint and we'll, I'll explain to you shortly what is the meaning of constraint. And it's just giving a name to the constraint. Forget about it for the time being. And then it's saying primary key student ID. Okay, so that is fairly straightforward. And of course, this primary key student ID is within parentheses as you see here. But of course, you don't need to worry about this because this part is going to be automatically generated. Okay, so now you've got the table, you've got the primary key. And for every column, you've got information about what type of column it is. Okay. Now, you can have a column, for example, what is varchar2? 
Well, first name is a field that is going to contain characters. Student ID is an integer. That's fine. Okay. First name is going to contain characters. Okay. Now, if I simply said character 50, I can do that. There is a data type called character. And I could have just said character 50. Okay. But then the problem becomes that for every student, it will take up 50 spaces. So, okay. Let's say you've got a student whose first name is David, a uh, Ben, and the last name is Joe. Unlikely, but yes, very short names, first and last name. Even though it requires only three characters, the database will still occupy all 50 characters. Okay, if you don't want that to happen, then you use this type called where care. Okay, now <coughs> where care is the type that is generally used in database systems. Where care 2 is a specific data type that is that works only in Oracle databases okay now it will not work in MySQL MySQL simply has where care okay but this will work in Oracle databases and the reason I'm using this is because Oracle data manager data modeler will generate code uh, I have asked it to generate code for the Oracle database because subsequently we are going to use the Oracle database for the project that you're going to do why am I using the Oracle database? Why not the MySQL database? I'll explain that later. Okay, the reason is uh, we are going to use some software which we don't have to install. It's available on the web. It's web-based software hosted by Oracle. So you'll actually be able to build and deploy your application on the web itself. And of course, that runs on the Oracle database. So that is why we are generating Oracle database here. Okay. So we've got the student table. Now the primary key, as I've already pointed out, is specified as a constraint. Now why do you call that a constraint? Because when you say a particular field is a primary key, you're actually placing constraints on the values you can put into that field. Right? What is the constraint? Well, the constraint is no two rows of a table are allowed to have the same value for the primary key. That's the meaning of the primary key, right? So what that does is it constrains the values that you can put into the field. And therefore, when you define a primary key, you define it as a constraint on the database. Okay? So this is a constraint because it prevents duplicate values for the primary key columns in the same table. Okay? That's why it's called as a constraint. And this is how you make this particular field, student ID, as the primary key for this table student okay you can just read this like English it says alter table which is you already defined the table now change it which table student table what do you do to it add a constraint and you just give a name to the constraint you're adding and what are you doing in this constraint you're creating a primary key which field student ID okay so this sentence really has uh, it makes sense to read this okay Similarly, now we look at the table course. Once again, you've got two fields. They create table course, course ID, course name, course ID, course name. Both are required, not null. And then alter table course, add constraint, put course PK, primary key, course ID. Okay, this is very straightforward. You're doing the same thing that you did in the previous example.